corner of the Temple Mount that we talked about before. Okay? You remember that? Yes. There's nothing left of it. But right on the other side of this school that's there today is the Temple Mount. Right on the other side of it. Right there would have been this corner right here. We're going to go look to see where this Israel pool is and talk about station one, two, and three. Can you hold this for a minute? A lot of people will begin station one right there because they kind of combine station one, two, and three. All right, so it's according whether you're Catholic, Greek Orthodox, Russian Orthodox, it's according to how you want to look at it. Antonio's Fortress yes. is where they, when you read the scripture, it's uh, Gospel of John chapter 18, verse 28. They said that they that Caiaphas takes him to the Praetorium. Right. And they're going to say that Pontius Pilate is in the Antonio Fortress. Mm -hmm. There's arguments, especially as a Protestant, that that's not it. But for today's purposes, Pontius Pilate is here. The Antonio's Fortress covers the whole thing. And so they're going to lead him from here. So we're going to go down here and start. And come back up. This is more at Mamluk architecture in there. This is a gate that goes actually into the Temple Mount. Mm -hmm. All right. Temple Mount kasi nasa likod ng ito. Sana makapunta na rin tayo dyan. Kasi nakatay yung first and second thing ako. Nakakain ako ng tinapay dito. <laughs> We got 45 minutes for quarter yeah. till. You okay, Salco? Let me take out a side of your hands. Open my bag up for you, please, madam. I'm gonna put this stuff up because it's just gonna cause a wreck. I know it's difficult, isn't it? All right, we can keep walking forever. But I want to show this stop right here. That's overlooking what's called the Tribes Gate to go into the Temple Mount. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's Lion's Gate down there or St. Stephen's Gate. And who is St. Stephen in the Bible? He's the first martyr. He gets stoned. Paul is there. Show Paul. And Paul's still persecuting the Christians at that point, and they say that, that St. Stephen is stoned there, and there's St. Stephen's Orthodox Church right outside before you get to Gethsemane. So mm -hmm. you're going down to that gate, all right? Yes. So Gethsemane is down that way. They bring him through, and they're going to, this is where the Catholics and Orthodox is messed up. Caiaphas and Annas have him first, and then they bring him to the Pontius Pilate, right? 
Yes. So we have to skip the Jewish part of it because they come straight in through the gate. And remember, it's about doing and remembering. All right, one of the first things that I read in this thing, and I thought it was really, really nice. This is not actually the place where Jesus walked. It is where the church venerates a mystery of Christ's life and a place sanctified by the prayers of the faithful. And so I really I think that's very beautiful. We've got to remember that. that. This is about the sanctification of your visit here to the Holy Land, whether it's online or in person, and to do and remember the way of the passion of Christ, of Yeshua Jesus. All right, so they bring him through the gate, and they're going to bring him to Pontius Pilate. All right, so now we're going to begin our walk up the real Via Dolorosa. Okay? I don't know if you're recording or live streaming. Yes, we're still on record. And for those who want to read in the Bible, it's the Gospel of John. And it's chapter 18, verse 28, mm -hmm. where Caiaphas leads Jesus, Yeshua, to the praetorium. Mm -hmm. All right. When you see these original stones, it's where they've been brought up from down below. Praetorium has two definitions. Yes. The Roman governor, if he's in the field or in a town that doesn't have buildings, where is he going to sleep? He's going to sleep in a tent like all the other Roman soldiers. But he's going to have a bigger, nicer tent mm -hmm. than the other Roman soldiers. So definition number one is the big, nice tent, praetorium, of the Roman governor. But when the Roman governor... The protector, it comes to Jerusalem, he's not going to sleep in a tent, especially with his wife, because he brings his wife. And so, the de second definition of praetorium is Roman governor's palace. The palace. But then, so we, when you read all four Gospels, uh, the account of the arrest and trial of Yeshua, you have three different places that he could have been taken. First is Praetorium, Judgment Hall, or Roman Governor's Palace. They're all basically synonymous because inside of this Antonio's Fortress that we keep talking about, that's where you're going to have the Judgment Hall. So the question is, is it the palace up by Jaffa Gate or is it this way? And for us, it doesn't matter. It's a spiritual walk to remember about what Christ had to go through before they put him on the tree at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre and he will die, but then arise three days later. Exactly, so it's not an easy walk. This is why I bring people down here so we can walk back up. Most of these stones are, are not original that are here. A few of them may be from the wall that was destroyed in the year 70, but they'll be the, the bigger walls. Shukran. So first, Pilate's going to have him scrawled, scourged. That means to, to be beaten. So this is going to be a traditional station number one. Even though we have the walk coming in through the gate. Mm -hmm. So come on in here. And so they'll have the place of the flagellation. These are the uh, Franciscan monks that are here. They've reproduced, actually, I don't know if that's original reproduction, but the pillar, the uh, crusader arch with the pillar type of yes. uh, decorations around it. Another type you remember of... Mateo that we had dinner with, with Anton and Maya, oh, the yeah. monk? Yeah. This is where he's out of here. Ah. So they had two different chapels. One is the fragilation and the other one is the beating, the scourging. You can come and spend time here. They have a small museum. This is station number one. This is the, this is the entrance to the college that's there today for the Muslim kids and Arabic kids here in the old city. 
Mm -hmm. Right? Patented, of course, during Easter. So this is a traditional spot for station number one. It is biblical because this is where Pilate is going to have him beaten and whipped the first time. So now we'll move on to station two. I love it. Station one. All right, so we got station number two. All right, so you have different churches, whether it's an Orthodox or a Catholic, but still in the same area where Pontius Pilate will bring him out and for him to be beaten. So this church here, this is going to be their marking of it. Okay. Okay, napunta ng Holy Land. Dito kayo magsisimula sa Via Dolorosa. Station 1 and Station 2. Let me see. All right, let's go to Station 3. Now remember, all this kind of merges in together, but they mark these things because it's important to keep our traditions and to keep everything going. And remember, we were just underneath the yes. Lithostrosos. The... Lithostrosos. So if you knock on this door over here, if you knock... She'll come in a minute or ring the bell and she'll hear. It may take her a minute or two. I understand. We just came out. So ring the bell and she's down there doing something for somebody else. She will come. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. So they're, they're putting all these in all these stations in together. Mm -hmm. All right. Because the next one is going to be the station of, of the cross. Actually marking station number three and four, which is going to be down there. So we've got the entrance of Yeshua coming in. We've got Pontius Pilate. We actually have the time of King Herod down below. This is where we were at before. Hadrian building the arch a hundred years after him. But we're heading to the hill of Golgotha, which I believe 100% is the place of the crucifixion. I didn't say burial, but the place of the crucifixion. <laughs> You okay, honey? Yeah. You want me to carry that back? No. You know, when we were down there below, you took a picture of him carrying his cross, right? Yes, yes. They marked, so for these Catholics, the, the, sister, the nuns in there, they marked that as a place where, where he would have grabbed his cross. But everyone does a little bit differently. So Dolorosa Street. And the Greeks, they're going to mark this as, I don't know what station they marked us at, but I do know this is the exit. This is the exit for the Western Wall Tunnel Tour. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's quite a distance down there. To fully understand all these pools, mm -hmm. And I look at where everything is. Wow, not sure I can fully understand 100%. Even the, when I would listen to the, uh, the archeologists and the expert historians have been doing this their whole life. They're, they're missing some things that I have questions about. So this is gonna be the patriarch and they're gonna say this is the prison. This is where he would have been kept. So the Greeks will say that he's kept here. Mm -hmm. When he's underground, I believe it's Psalm 81 that memorializes him being kept in the pit. This is for the Greeks. This is going to be where he's put into prison. And not in the Kayapas place? There's a prison also in the Kayapas place. Exactly. So that's the... Have we done the... We did the trial of Yeshua from a Protestant standpoint, right? So it makes more sense that he's arrested, taken to the Jewish quarter, St. Peter's of Galilee, Kantu, Caiaphas' house on, on Mount Zion, and mm -hmm. then brought around to the outside of the Tower of David, the... the um, Herod's palace. But again, this is about doing and remembering and the suffering of Christ. And we are, but we are going back to his time. When we go down below, these are the days where he may have walked on these streets. It's, uh, and that's the main thing to remember. He was here, so were the disciples. And Stephen being, uh, she was walking that side probably. 
Sheila. Come, baby. So hoping everyone will be blessed ngayong habang nanonood kayo ng video na to. This entire building from here all the way around the corner yeah. is in an Armenian church. I think it's the uh, Armenian Church of uh, Mary. Armenian. Armenian. They have this entire corner block. It's really big. We'll see the, the other side, the other entrance, the west entrance. I apologize, Kabayans, that today's not as organized because I, I'm not as uh, expert on this stuff as I am on other things. But I love it. I like doing it. Right. We're now approaching like station three and four in one place, and we'll read what station three and four has to say. Whenever, this is for you in the future, Benjamin. When you see these markings on the ground, yes. I've showed it to you before, this is a station, okay? These are more of the pavements that are brought up either from Antonio's Fortress or brought up from down below. So station three and four in one spot, it's still the Armenian section. Shukana Bibi. So this, this whole thing is gonna go all the way back. These are the Armenian Catholics. Armenian Catholics. Armenian Catholic. Remember, the Orthodox Armenian, Armenian quarter, and Armenian Catholics is a different uh, theological teaching, all right? Mm -hmm. They probably still do it in the language of Armenia, all right? But it's a different theological teaching. They're normally open, and this uh, Catholic church, this, excuse me, this Armenian church of Mary Mourns is usually through that door, and it's normally open always. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it's closed today. Station so, three. what happens at the station three? That's going to be Jesus falls under the cross for the first time. All right? Mm -hmm. So, you've got him falling under the cross. You're going to have him picking it back up. And then we're going to have station five. What's going to happen after he falls and can't pick it up? We have Joseph. Nope. We have Simon, Simon of Cyrene. Cyrene. So, we're going to go to station number five where we mark that Simon helps carry his cross. You look good, baby. <laughs> I didn't no. know they put the toilets here. These are new. No materialized the Nyam Via Dolorosa. So, we're going to be here in the old city of Jerusalem. We're going to be here in the Station of the Cross or Via Dolorosa. Passion of the Christ, Papuntang. Church of the Holy Sepulchre. So, tapos na natin yung station 1, 2, 3, and 4, and we're going to station 5. So, pag nagpunta kayo dito, ayun mag Via Dolorosa o mag Station of the Cross, ito yung dadaanan. Okay, this is station number 5. Let's get out of there away. So Simon of Cyrene, where is Cyrene at, do you know? It's in North Africa. So Simon, Shimon was his name, he's coming to Jerusalem during the High Holy Days, mm -hmm. and they choose him, um, probably outside the city walls. This would have been outside the city walls. But this is why I argue up by Jaffa Gate that there is a pool called Hezekiah's Pool. Mm -hmm. Maybe he'd have been watering his horses and cleaning up before coming in the city. But today, this is about Simon being forced to carry the cross. They enlisted a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, father of Alexander, and Rufus, who is coming into the country to carry his cross. I'd never heard those names before. Wow. Hey. Hi. Bone is found down below, and many people believe that when Christ fell, when he put his hand on the ground to catch himself, that's his it handprint. Bye-bye. So, ito yung beliefs na stone kung saan na-touch ni Jesus nung natumba siya dito. Magta-touch din tayo dito. Papakita natin sa inyo sa station number 5. You want to put your hand in? No. Station number 5, the hands of Jesus. Why it's a different color? Bring in the Hello, brother. How are you, sir? Everything good? It's okay. Practicing. 
anything, any person. I'm good, I'm practicing. Station Thank 5 ng nakfall si Jesus dito, yung bilip yung kamay niyo. Nasa baba ito, pero nilagay nila dito sa station number 5. We're good. So if that's station 5, where do we go next? Station 6. Very good. Do you know what happens at station 6? No. <laughs> Here's why you don't know. Um, it's not biblical, but yet it is. But they're going to say that station 6 is where a lady named Veronica wipes his face. Is, is wow. Veronica mentioned in the Bible? Yeah. Yes. Yeah? So does it say that she, that Veronica is the one that wipes his face as he's carrying the cross? No. Nope. But because it is a, a scripture talking about that, they're going to venerate it. All right. So we've got to find station number six. But I don't know if you can we have a, we got we're doing all these. Give them a chance to please. Give them a chance. more than welcome to. No, no. Thanks. She's my wife. We live here. We're not she's nice. We don't have any money, man. All right, so station 6 is going to be uh it, it was moved, but it's okay. Um this is going to be about Veronica, wipes the sweat from Jesus. And may the Lord's face shine upon you. It comes from Numbers, but I don't know that Veronica is actually in the uh, New Testament. She comes from extra biblical, uh, the Apocrypha, which is in the Catholic Bible. So and everyone's going to know about Veronica. But this is Station 6, where he would fall for the second time and she's going to wipe his face. So that's why we have the, it's like the face of Jesus. That, you, I've told you about the museum, the yes. Shroud of Turin. That's something different than Veronica. This thing, this, uh, this thing that supposedly you wipe his face, that's in Italy someplace. It's not the Shroud of Turin, that's something else. And we have to look that up because I don't know about it. But the Shroud of Turin that covered the whole body of a human being for sure, I don't know if you're going to convince me that that was our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, but it covered a real human being and they can't explain it. It's a free museum at Notre Dame. You need to go in there. It's incredible. Which, which Notre Dame? I'll show you. Don't forget, and I'll show you. All right, we're going to move to Station 7. So he's carrying the cross. Actually, he's not because Simon of Cyrene is carrying the cross. But he's having to help him. He's sweating. Veronica is going to wipe his face. And as you can see, this steep hill, he's mm -hmm. carrying it up. If they can see the incline of this place, he's getting more tired and more tired. Simon of Cyrene's getting tired. And so we're going to hit number, station number seven. Again, we don't have scripture that backs it up, but it's about the way of the passion as he's traveling from all the way down in the valley. Uh, baby. Normally, this is open. I don't know why station number seven is not, is not, but this is a tradition of where he will fall for a second time, okay? Normally, you can go in the door. So when I go to the gym, I'm dripping. I don't know why they have it locked, but they do. So this is gonna be a little weird, but we're gonna do it. We're gonna walk up to eight, and then we have to come back down and go to number nine. Hmm. All right? Because you got to remember, building gets built, things happen. We're going to the station. 
John, number eight. And this has been a tradition for a very long time because we had the bottom one there. So this is station number eight. And this is where Jesus uh, consoles the women of Jerusalem. And this is based upon scripture. Mm -hmm. Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not over me. Weep rather over yourselves and for your children. For if green wood is treated thus, how will the dry wood be treated? So this is gonna be station number eight. Look, y'all need to remember millions and millions of people every year come into each one of these stations and we're making them holy by coming here. Doing and remembering. Yes. What? One hundred and fifty years old, which is not very old in Jerusalem, because yeah, these streets are new. <coughs> if you want to learn the stages of the cross, he has small pamphlets like this one in there, like five shekels. Station 9. We're going to the 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 station 9. We're going to do you know what street this is? No. It's the Cardo. The Cardo. The Cardo. Yep, a Cardo means hinge or the heart of the city. Every Roman city they had starting from the north to the south mm -hmm. would be the Cardo. You had two Cardos in Jerusalem, remember? Yes. A west one and an east one. Yes. But yes. then you have a street that runs from east and west called the Decamanus. That's the Via Dolorosa. But because of the layout and the geography of the city, and the, the geography, heights and everything, the street has to turn. Normally, the Decamanos go straight mm -hmm. and a Carta goes straight and they make a cross in the middle. It's harder to do in Jerusalem for many different reasons, mostly the geography, okay. Okay, the terrain of the ground. So we made a left off the Decamanos, but if you came in from the north side of the city and you wanted to go to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, this is why you'd enter from the east side. So yes. we're going north to south, and we're mm -hmm. going to make a right going west. Yes. It's, it's really important when the first church was built 1,700 years ago, when Helen marks the spot that was marked by Hadrian, who built a Roman pagan temple over the top of the place of the crucifixion. Helen tears down the Roman pagan temple, and she builds the first church of the Holy Sepulchre. And so they're still Byzantium, still Romans, but they're under Christian rule. And if they enter from the north, you would come this way, and then you would enter from the east side. We're not going to do Station 9 because I want them to get a feel for how it would be to really enter from the east. This is the main road. It had been a lot wider than this. And everyone's coming. Many people are coming in from the north. If they mm -hmm. came from the east, they would intersect and they would come this way. Station nine goes up there and it's a back way to get inside the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, mm -hmm. but I want them to see entering from the east. So this is station nine, but they have a map here. So they're now some structure. Hello. Okay, 
Așa, joc,